Good morning and welcome to the Medaya Light Women's Puerto Rico Open from the Convention Centre in San Juan. It's crunch time for a place in the semi-finals for Kelly Fisher and Olivia Zalewska. It's a race to four, best of three sets. We're playing ten ball, early tens count. It's all ball fouls, three foul rule. And of course, cool shots. And calling the shots with me in the booth is Eric Hollison. Pleasure to be with you guys again. Well, this is a repeat of the singles we saw in the team championship last night. Great Britain advancing, just needed two sets. They won the first two sets, and then kind of fell apart. And <laughs> Poland ended up winning it 3-2. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough. And they were eliminated. And Kelly Fisher last night beat Olivia 4-0 in the singles. But it's a new day and a new format. Yeah, we're going to make Kelly coming in as a for, as a favorite here. She has about a 70-point edge in Fargo. Olivia is a former European women's nine-ball champion. Up-and-coming player on the tour. She's made it deep in this tournament. See how, see if she's able to make it even further. Nothing on the break for Kelly on the first rack. Two-ball getting in the way for Zalewska. She can push for distance here. Kelly taking a sip of that coffee. She was quite late in the arena. She waited 25 minutes for that cup of coffee. With love heart on the top of it and all sorts. Needs her coffee in the morning. <laughs> Olivia's route to the quarterfinals beat Skylar Hess, Wan Ling Wang, Jasmine Ocean, one of her victims and then Soldad Ayala from Argentina 28 years old oh. might get this one back pushed yeah. out Eric just <laughs> explain the push out rule to those that may be new to the game? Yeah, so Kelly's uh, coming in as the incoming player. She has the choice to either pass it back to Olivia or take the shot herself. So Olivia being the pushing player doesn't want to make it too tough for Kelly, but wants to also put her in a spot where she can't really attack or be offensive. Kind of like a 50-50 proposition overall. It's actually a decent one. Put Kelly in tough, but Kelly's going to take it. Actually, almost made it there. A little bit too thin. Yeah, Forster into taking a tough pot. Just barely missed it. So Olivia going to come to the table. Pretty much open table. She needs to assert herself in this match. Kelly will know she's the favorite. Try to play like she's the favorite. But if she's put under pressure, Olivia can turn that thought. Three other quarterfinals going on at the same time. Jasmine Ocean up against Cheska Centino. Now, Cheska knocked Jasmine out at the semi final stage here last year. And Cheska's taken the first rack there. That's available on table one on YouTube. All the others are available on kazoom.com. Gonna have to find a way to free the cue ball up towards the five. Going to get a lot of angles that are going to play into the right side of the table, but that ta that side is too congested. So she'll try to get straighter on the four and possibly draw straight back. There is actually room on the right side rail to play between the seven and nine, and that's what she's going to go for as well. You mentioned it's important that she gets off to an early start, a good early start. Dutch billiard coach there in the front front row. Left herself a little longer here. Natural position, though. She just has to focus on the pocketing.
Bit of a shorter backstroke, bit of a quicker action. Sets up over the ball nicely, though. She's going to be looking to stop the cue ball here. Ideally, if she can draw it to the point where she gets straight on the seven. Minimize the cue ball movement. She's on the rail, though. So might come up short on the draw here. Ideally, she's gone a little bit, hasn't come back here. Bit of work to do, Eric, with a cue ball now. Yeah, but ideally want her to be straighter. There are options to get back in good position on the eight. She can draw the cue ball two rails or power draw over one rail. Kind of in between on both shots, see what she chooses here. Good shot. It's a good opening rack for Olivia. Stayed stayed well in line, made a nice shot on the five. Yeah, and it all started with that intelligent push out that she played on the one ball, Eric. Yep. Looking like she's ready. And she was here a good 45 minutes before the start, hitting balls. That's good. Getting the arm. Loosened up. Yeah, she's young and hungry. Further, she's made it in a major tournament. Of course, her opponent's been in this spot 50 to 100 times in her life. One of the most decorated and successful women's players of all time. Really has played this rack immaculately. Yeah, strong start. So Zalewska takes the first rack. one nothing, breaking in the second rack. It is finals day here today for the women. We had the men's yesterday and Olivia's fellow country person, Conrad Musician, was triumphant over Roland Garcia in the final. And we have our semi-finals of the women's coming up today at 2 p.m. And then the final is at 5 and then we're not finished there because we have the teams playing later on tonight at 8.30, I believe it starts. And they'll be playing down to the semi-final stage. Then tomorrow we have the semi-finals and the finals of the teams. Who's your pick for the finals in the, in the teams, Eric? Some tough matches coming up. I haven't thought about it too much. The, the eight teams that have advanced are all strong. I noticed Portugal and South Korea to the theoretically lower seeds are, have drawn each other in the first round. That's interesting. Um, yeah, some tasty, really tasty ones. Team Austria against Team USA. Germany against Spain. Chinese Taipei against GB. And as you said, Portugal against South Korea. Yeah. So there's some really good matchups there. I think I'm going to go with the chalk. I'm going to go with um, Chinese Taipei against the winner of Germany and Austria. Those are all the, f I think those are all the on paper favorites. I, I do feel like. Do we don't fancy USA? I think I think the female players for those three teams I, I listed are stronger. April April's held her own, no doubt. And if she's able to keep doing that, the US for sure has a chance. I think it's an interesting format where the US is also able to put Shane up twice in the in the first four sets. So even if his teammates don't win either of their sets they can still force a shootout assuming Shane wins both right but you know Shane's playing really really well right now and I think that's a big weapon for them back to this one Olivia breaking off yeah didn't get much action out of the rack there went from the middle just has to get a little more speed in that break overall gonna be a moving rack here First ball that has to be navigated is the two. Kelly doesn't have a shot here. She'll be playing safe. Yeah, I think you have to favor Kelly in the safety department. Yeah, more experience. Been playing a lot of these Predator Pro Series 10 ball tournaments in the last year and a half. Yeah, I think she's won five of them. Yeah, awesome. Maybe even six. I think she won five in a row. Awesome record. When, when, the, when Predator first launched, launched the Pro Brilliant Series, she really dominated for the first three or four events. She 
Just tell you about the other games going on. Rublin Army is up against the reigning champion, Wei Tu Chen, who beat Cheska in last year's final. Cheska has gone 2-0 up now against Jasmine Ocean. Good three, jump there by Olivia. Three Chinese Taipei players in the last eight. And Wang Ling Wang is up against Chao Chai Yu. I also. mentioned her earlier in the tournament. I don't know if you remembered. Uh, I remember yeah. Wang, yes. I'm telling you, she's going to be a good player, and she's proving it now. This, this is the furthest she's made it in a, in a major tournament. And, you know, it, maybe not quite there yet to win the tournament, but I, I really predict her for, for her to be a good player going forward. Shot there by Kelly, nicely controlling the cue ball. Just left the right side rail. Olivia will definitely be attacking from there. Three ball is going to stop the movement of the one ball up table, but she can still play the cue ball behind a big wall of balls here down by the racking area. And it doesn't have quite as much of it as I thought. Gonna yeah, have to she spin needs it. to bend it, right? Yeah. Lots and lots of left hand spin, raising the butt as well. Yeah, I just couldn't quite get into enough of the one that she wanted. Still left a reasonably safe result. Kelly's going to be attacking. Really a lot of congestion here down by the racking end. Particularly getting from the two to the three is going to be a challenge. The cue ball is going to be running into the either the eight or the ten. Cue ball's traveling naturally across. I feel like she'll get a shot at landing just above the five. See what she can do with the two. Yeah, as you said, though, the angle she's got on this two ball, very difficult. Yeah, if you run into the right side of the eight or the ten, the cue ball will start tracking up the right side of the table, but it almost looks like she can't draw into either of those balls enough. So she might just consider playing safe. Looks like she's going after it. Might just play a thicker safe. Yeah, thicker safe up table. Oh, she didn't want that point. Yeah, she was safe on the whole right side of the table with the point through the two over to the left side and left an opening here. Nothing to do with the cue ball to get on the three either. Yeah, it's Five lays nice, as Eric, as well. Yeah, it? five only goes in the right side pocket, but the four plays well into the five. Toughest ball on the table for Zalewska is going to be the seven. Wow. Those ones got to go down, though. It's a, you know, it's a long, tough shot. Still early in the match. Quick at the stroke, though. You know, it's it's almost like when you're quick at the stroke, you don't get as good rotation on the object ball and those ones that are kind of like half out of the pocket. They just don't go down as often. You tend to overhit the ball a little bit too. <coughs> Excuse me, Kelly's going to go two rails forward here for the four. Try to get as straight as possible to be able to hold near where the four is. Yeah, draws a good play there too. Bit of concern on her face. She did have a good opening rack though, so she just have to stick with that type of mentality. Yeah, I mean, she's already done better than she did last night against Kelly. Kelly won 4-0 in their singles last night. Very deep in thought there. I wonder what she's thinking. Hmm. Looks like one of our league players. League event is getting down to the nitty gritty as well. Yeah, it was absolutely packed solid in here last night with all the teams from the BCA leagues playing the state championships. It was teams day. You couldn't walk around the arena hardly, could you? No, she missed a five similar to this last night to win the match at 2-0. No miss this time, though. Yeah, I got it this time. Looks like the seven might actually pocket past the nine. Definitely doesn't have a full pocket. 
But the way she's played position there, not much else she can do except try the seven. She could be considering the combo as well. Wow, she's really far from the either the combo or the pocketing play. This is tough. Short races here, don't forget. So Kelly, last thing Kelly wants is to be down two nothing in the first set. Shaking her head, too far from it. Hard to play advanced shots. Yeah, definitely the, the popping definitely doesn't go. Safes aren't easy, so I think she's going to go with the combo here. Yeah, safety. Did go safe. Nice shot. Caught a small roll there because if she didn't run into the eight, I feel like she was going to overplay the eight ten and leave a shot. But worked out for her. Maybe the jump cue again. Hasn't brought it with her. Yeah, got to think quick. I think she sells an extension. She took it. So she'll have a little more time to think about her play here. What is the play here, Eric? If you jump at it and hit the right side of the seven, you can create distance. But the issue with that is that the seven is going to tend to end up over the bottom right corner a lot. If you're gonna go, if you're gonna kick, I kind of would favor the short rail kick. She's considering two rails right now. Good hit. Good contact. But left a shot for Kelly. Yeah, Kelly's gonna be a big favorite to run these last four balls and even the score at one all. Done. Nine and ten in the same pocket then for Kelly. Just locking that angle in the brain, in the muscle memory. Wants this to bounce though. Yeah, a little closer to the rail than she would have liked. Still, a, still in good position here though. Yeah, levels things up, and she will be breaking its winner breaks in this format. Now, we are here in the San Juan Convention Centre, and I've got a nice little fact about the Convention Centre. The ballroom we're in, actually, is 39,000 square feet. And outside where we held the opening ceremony, there's also a 12,800 square foot terrace. Had some nice nibbles out there and a little bit of entertainment as well, didn't we? Now, there's a Baby Boomers Expo that starts today down on floor ground floor level if you want to come along for that and there's actually a poor fashion show it's for dogs and that starts tomorrow now i got to thinking do you think the fashion show for dogs do they still use a catwalk <laughs> you, you get throwing me riddles at 10 30 in the morning here mark i'm just kidding i think they would have to what else would it be a dog walk <laughs> <laughs> might be <laughs> i've always wondered why they call uh, 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 models, you know, like human models. Why do they call it a catwalk for them? Oh, I'd like to know that. Right. If anyone knows, stick Go it in the chat for us. <laughs> Google has all the answers. We'll have to check it out. 22,500 is the prize money they're playing for for first. Second runner-up is 13,125. Third place, 6,563. And 3,281 for the loser of this match. Yeah, so good. still a little bit of a paycheck, Eric. Yeah, good prize money on offer all around. 500,000 total prize on offer this week. Teams will be playing for big money today. 120,000 first prize in the team event. Conrad Shishin won the men's event yesterday, taking home 37,500. 
Predator really doing a lot for the pro game. So Kelly breaking off. We're all square. So important this first set. Kelly going from the middle. I've, I've done a lot of her matches on the Pro Billiard Series. She definitely favors the side rail, but looking to change something up here. Breaking with a gold rush. Hit him well. There goes the two. Yeah, I definitely think Kelly has one of the better breaks in the women's game. Yeah. Very powerful. I know she works very, very hard on the break as well. Well, she shoots so well that if she if she ever gets a good break going, I mean, she's gonna be, she's very tough to beat. She has been ocean up there with the very top women's breakers as well. She's playing a match on table one right now. Yeah, let's just check over on there for a minute. It's Jessica Centino. He's on the hill in the first set there. Three one up against Jasmine Ocean. Quick set in typical Centeno fashion. Yeah, reigning world temple champion. You commentated on her in Austria, Eric. I mean, how good can she be? Just 24 years old. Yeah. They, they've been tagging her as a prodigious star for the last eight years, and she had a decent amount of success. At, you know, a couple years were off from COVID. I think they were really predicting that she'd win one before 20. It took her a few more years, but you can see she's really coming into her own now, and she's going to be a force. Quality of how she played that women's final. And, you know, she, she could have won the men's final. That's how good, that's how good she played. So Levska's got a chance at the one here. It's strange she didn't call her shot until she was down on the shot. Well, mind, oh, mind the LED. Look at that. Looks like it's part of the LED display there, yeah. didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's caught the top of the four, kind of launched the cue ball further than she would have wanted. Bit flushed and embarrassed. Almost added a cue ball to that guy's shirt there. <laughs> a little flush there, but things like that happen when you're trying long jumps. Tough to keep the cue ball on the table. Good rack here for Kelly. Got to make sure she stays on top of the five, otherwise she'll be running into the eight. Natural angle here is going to afford her some angle on the four, which will play well in, into being high on the five. Won't really be wanting to track the cue ball, cue ball up the left side of the table, so she'll want an angle where she can come straight down one rail or possibly fall two rails forward. Kind of in between here. I feel like she'll choose the one rail path. Definitely can't go two rails forward or anywhere to the right of the eight. Could choose to play the short side as well. Cue ball's tracking naturally into that area. Yeah, just somebody getting up and walking out the arena in front of the shot. Done the wise thing, Eric. Got up, started again. Yeah, she'll have seen it all at this point in her career. Just won't let anything bother her. Knows how to react to situations that aren't necessarily what she wants. Darren Appleton was down on a a temple shootout shot and a guy got up twice during his shot oh dear oh, unexpected miss there so Olivia with a chance to get on two here good chance everything in the open Good solid cue movement there. Slowed the backstroke down a little bit. Stayed down on the shot nicely. 
All good recipes for making a longer pot like that. Jessica Centino has taken the first set against Jasmine Ocean, 4-1. So she's got one foot in the semi-final. Kind of like hitting that shot with a bit of a flatter bridge, kind of like a makeshift closed bridge on the rail instead of going open bridge, but she hit it nicely. Taking advantage of a couple chances here. Ran one full rack. Full advantage of a mistake from Kelly in the third rack. Yeah, and what this does do, it puts a little bit of pressure on Kelly, saying to her, you know, if you miss a, a key ball, I'm going to punish you for it. And yeah. she has. Yeah, and we're, you know, we're getting near the end of the tournament. So although Kelly's been here many times, she will be aware of the levity of the situa situation. And if Olivia starts mounting a solid effort it can play into Kelly's mind yeah, not much to bring you other, otherwise really way to Chen is two racks up against Rubelian Army in the first set one of your favourites Wan Ling Wang he's level with Chao Che Yu that's probably the the big tie of the round two Chinese Taipei ladies going at it it's pretty strong, isn't it? Shows their back, three of them in the last eight. I was just going to say, yeah, three, three Chinese Taipei, two Filipinos. Asian women are still heading up the real strength of the game. Alison Fisher was here as well. Didn't make it through to the final eight. Yeah, she was beaten by Wan Ling Wang by two straight sets. Oh, wow. So strong stuff. Back to this one. Four balls not going to be available. Cue ball's kind of traveling towards the eighth. That could pl that could play okay. Looks like more towards the two actually. Three's not in the. That's the position of the three is quite handy if you want to try and do some. Maneuvering yeah, on she, the four. Yeah, she could play it into the four off the short rail. Oh, that was a nice little shot there. Really well judged. She could even move it here, look, if she fancies it. Yeah. She'll end up with too much angle on the three that way, but it's definitely a thought in her mind because she will be guaranteed some kind of shot on the three. If she chose to go into it off the three, she's not always going to get a shot on the four. We'll see what she does here. Yeah, you're kind of leaving it till last minute as well, aren't you, if you choose to do it? Yeah, she did. Nicely nice done. Nice shot. Eight balls covering a lot of the pocketing, pocketing angles for the five. There's room on the left side of the table to have more angle than she would like on the five. But I feel like she's going to have to play over to that area. So just getting an angle on the four here, that's going to naturally bring it over to the left side. Just six inches left of where the cue ball is now would be kind of nice. Yeah, she wants to get as thick as possible to have the to have the angle to possibly draw out of it, but it gets dangerous because you're playing right towards the eight. Then, if she were to get it pretty much right where she is right now, that'd be perfect. But it's a big risk on actually having the eight block the five. Three times across, four right. times across. How is it? Needs a bounce. Well, it's it's okay. She's got a shot at it. Yeah. The offense here would be stun the cue ball just before the bottom right corner pocket and take the cue ball around three rails. A lot of traffic coming off the third rail. 
It's a tough shot. I think she's going to lean towards playing safe here. I think you're right. Decent wall of balls in the middle. Controlled the five well. Yeah, good and, shot. And that's a good effort from Kelly. Developed the four. Got in a spot where she's the favorite in the second part of the rack. Solid hit. Nice control kick there, and she's got Kelly. That's a great shot. Takes nerve to be able to hit those tougher type kicks at a slow speed. You know, if the if the object ball is not far from the cue ball, that's fine. A lot of players know that angle, but when the object ball is that far from the rail and to hit it at a slow speed, it has to be a very precise kick. Nicely executed there. Kelly wow. defending. Nice shot. Nothing doing on the six, though, so it will be another safety. Is there a possible bank? I think she can bank it. I think the bank has two-way elements to it. She'll definitely be considering it. It's tempting to play safe because there's the 8-10 the walls pretty big in the middle of the table. Kind of the advisable play there, just holding holding through after a good shot on the five. I mentioned at the start of this match that the safety element of it could be crucial in this particular battle. But so far, Olivia has kicked out of most of the problems that Kelly's presented her. Yeah, she's holding her own in the safe department. Similar kick to last time here. Great try. A little unlucky to catch the 10 there. She was trying to play the cue ball behind the 7. It's a good try overall. She left Kelly Angle. She's going to be coming around three rails and trying to play the 7 in the same pocket as the 6. The lie's pretty natural. Got to be careful of the corner coming off the second rail. Oh, where's the cue ball? Watch the cue ball. It's in. She knew it. And it's one of those shots where, you know, you know it's going near there, but it, the cue ball is always going to have to hit near it. Yeah, I don't think she posted the ball into the side of the pocket that she wanted to. I think she hit it slightly thin, Eric. That's always part of it, yeah. Newest addition to the Jam Up team, Kelly Fisher. Good. Jam Up's a great brand. She'll want to play Jam Up. That's right. She's going to have to. She's going to be likely down 3-1 here. Nice little straight. One at an angle going to the right. Even if she has angle going to the left, she'll be okay. Just fall through to the rail. Slight angle. This is a good performance from Olivia, considering... I oh know I keep going on about it, but she did get heavily beaten last night. But she's come back fighting. Very determined, Eric. Yeah, it's it's the furthest she's been in a, in a major tournament, and there's you know sometimes you can you see this in all sports. Sometimes you just see a, a surprise winner that's never been the near the end, and they make it through. The general progression is they'll make it a little further. They'll make it to the quarterfinals once or twice, then they'll make it to the semifinals once or twice, and they just gain experience and start winning. It looks like Olivia has a chance here to keep this Cinderella run going. Well, you haven't played my new game yet, have you? Which one's that? Jeopardy. 
Okay, I'm, 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 I'm up for the challenge. So I give you the answers, and you just give me the question, okay. right? Okay. Two players with the most Moscone appearances for U.S. and Europe. Uh, Strickland for the U.S. One out of two. Wrong. No way. Strickland does not have. Is not one of the top two for the U.S. Is that most the question? No, most appearances in the Moscone mm -hmm. for the U.S. team and for the. Yeah, so for the U.S. I would go with Strickland. It's not. No, it's not. It's Archer? Jo Johnny Archer. Okay. okay. I'll it. give you two. I'll, I'll give you two chances. <laughs> That's all right. Who do you think it is for the for Europe? I would. I would consider Soke. Ralph Soke. Yeah. Correct. Inaugural winner of the U.S. Open in 1976. Oh, that's tough. Maybe Mike Siegel. It is Mike okay. Siegel. You certainly know your stuff, don't you? Breaking off. I'm going to ask you a couple more later. Archer has more appearances than Earl. I learn something new every day. Not by many. Did you, did you count them? By or two. Like. And it's seven, 17 it is. 17 and 15, yeah. yeah and 17 for Suke as well. Imagine how good you have to be to be at the top of a whole continent for that long. Hmm. Wonder how many filler we'll end up with. Shane's got to be up there too. Shane's got to be easily over 10. I think he's 13. Yeah. Shot. Look at this. Was Alaska's going to have a chance to win the first set here. Oh, the five's going to get in the way. I thought she had enough speed, but the five is blocking her. It's a makeable jump. She'll be going for it. One thing that has her concerned is the distance between the cue ball and the five. side of it that's one that in the future she's gonna, gonna want to uh, improve her jumping because the best players in the world are gonna go after that jump straight to the jump cue tougher execution but it'll be a shot that they feel decently comfortable with way too gent defending champion on the hill in the first set against Rublin army Team Philippines went out last night on a shootout from the team's tournament. They were defending champions, went down to Spain. Yeah, surprising early exit, but it just shows the overall quality of play in the teams this year. And this is a mistake from Kelly. She's hooked herself. Yeah, just seeing the table react a little bit tighter than... She's been used to the rest of the week, but she'll take note of that going forward. Yeah, caught the point, I meant to say. Bit of angle going the wrong way, but there's a lot of room on the left side of the table. She'll be maneuvering the cue ball in that area. I heard a story the other day of a player that was actually in a shootout. And they were wearing one of these smartwatches like Kelly's got on. And it went off? Was it, it was buzzed on the on the wrist as they were about to take this oh shot. And, it was a, and the guy looked at the watch and it was a message from a guy sat watching. No wishing way. him good luck. No way. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> Must have came in delayed or something. <laughs> Sharked by your own friends? It was actually Kang Lee who was wearing the watch. Hmm. Eventually turned it off, of course. But it's a strange one because players aren't allowed to have their phones in the arena with them at the time. 
going to have to think of that stipulation as well. Yeah, so it may be smartwatch is going to have to be brought into the equation as well. Shot from Kelly there. Good recovery. Uh, this. The cue ball ended up. Okay. Could go three rails forward. I think she might need a little gadget on the end of the brake queue here. Can she reach this? Yeah, she's going for a little gadget. This is actually a bit of an awkward angle. It's a little too much to draw up the side rail, which would be the easiest shot. And you have to power it a lot going three rails forward or two like right side rail, left side rail across. It's right in the middle of all three shots. She's... She's a great player, and she'll figure it out. You know what she's actually considering now is just cinching it and taking the tougher cut on the 10 because both out, both the other angles don't lie very well. Very adept with the rest, though, with the bridge. Used to playing, using it a lot for snooker. And as you said, Eric, deciding on the tougher 10. Yeah, and this is missable. Yeah, and Zaluska, Zalewski, rather, is on the hill as well, so he doesn't sure. want to leave this. Added pressure. Oh, she's missed it. Where has wow. it ended up? It's Thin on. as well. This is missable too. I would make her a favorite to make it, but it could have ended up in a 100% situation for Zalewska. She's going to have to come up with a good shot here. Struggling at the moment. The Brit. But Zalewska showing true grit. In it goes. And she takes the first set by four racks to one. And we'll be back with set number two after a very short break. Don't go anywhere.
welcome back. The referee removes the aero rack. This will be his last match today, actually. He's going to go and do a bit of sightseeing in San Juan, and then he's off back home. Yeah, they've done a great job all week. Yeah, don't get enough praise, the referees. They have to concentrate every single shot. They don't get to sit down like the players do. Oh, that seemed a bit weak. Yeah, can I have to work on adding speed into a break? In How do you get more power? Because it's obviously got nothing to do with build because we see the smallest of players you know, breaking harder. What is the secret to a good break, Eric? It's a lot of things. It's timing of how your body's standing up. For her, I would I would suggest for her to lengthen her backstroke a little bit, maybe get her bridge a little flatter. You know, just energy transfer, hitting the, making the the tip follow downward through the cue ball. It's like eight things. It's not an e it's not an easy. Uh, it's one of the toughest shots. Oh, that was a. Misjudged safety there from Kelly. She's just suffering a little bit at the moment. Hasn't settled. And Olivia needs to take advantage of those situations when they arise. Yeah, I like trying to play the cue ball behind the six here. Three rails around. One's going to cut over, cut over to the right. And if she doesn't get exactly behind the six, the three, seven, five will help her. Aim for the chalk on the rail. <laughs> I like the area she played the cue ball into, but I would have played it with more left spin and try to get into the third rail. Good yeah. shot, though. Yeah, she's got up right behind the tent. This is a jump shot waiting to be attacked. Would be very unlucky not to have a shot on the two after it over this bottom left-hand corner. Kelly's going to ha have to have a sense of urgency here, too. I mean, she's one set away from elimination. She knows how to handle it. She's been in these spots before. We'll see how she responds. Yeah, the bong's going off. Didn't want to hear the cowbell at the end. Kind of reminds me of one of them bells that you get at the carnival, you know, where you hit the hammer onto the... Oh, look at that, look. That's the air rush. Stuck the... The butt in the pocket. Good try. Good effort. Gotta get that butt out of there. Yeah, I guess she get knew the butt out. I guess she knew it wasn't gonna hit it, but <laughs> looks like she's covered the one here. Four is kind of covering the short rail as well. Might be able to get into it, but won't be able to pocket it. Good try. Left it, though. Everything's reasonably open. Going to have to get the cue ball in a small area to pocket the eight, but that's that's a few shots in. tougher than it looks here. Ideally, we'd want to play the three in the side and have an angle going towards the four, but the nine is kind of blocking that angle. Other option is to play the three in the corner and play some kind of draw back to the four, but the five is kind of blocking that. Oh, she didn't yeah. want to catch that nine ball. She's made the eight very difficult now as well. She's not quite firing on all cylinders here for Fisher. Gonna have to draw out of this angle. She's barely thick enough that she can. Natural angle worked and that's a great shot. What a recovery there. Going to be some work to do from the eight to the nine. Those two ladies behind enjoyed it. 
admiring that shot from Kelly. And she hasn't won all these titles that she's won by laying down because she went behind. No doubt. She's a fighter. Her dad was a boxer. Didn't know that. She wouldn't mind running into the eight or the nine here. If the seven was a little more over the side pocket, she definitely would. Probably going to avoid it just because of where the seven is. Not quite available enough. Hit the nine. Made the eight a little easier. Nice stay on the seven. Gonna have to move the cue ball twice across to get back for the nine properly. But just opening up the nine a little more should be able to get a better angle on the eight. Looks pretty good here. If the ten wasn't where it was, she'd come across two rails and play the nine in the long pocket. She'll want to avoid the ten and it's got to be careful of the sides coming cross table here. Must have played. Yeah, she knew that and hit it at lighter speed, just making sure she would never hit it be hard enough to scratch in the opposite side pocket. Oh she held that well. Yeah, good shot. Oh, this is a lot easier than the ten she missed. In the previous set, in it goes. First blood to quick fire Kelly Fisher. Not quite quick fire at the moment. Struggling still just a little bit, but getting the work done, Eric. Yeah, you, you brought up the quick fire because she, sh she shot the 10 real quickly there, but that's usually how Kelly plays when she's in stroke. I mean, she's been in a few tough spots, but seeing her get down at the end of her shot clock a few times is not typical of Kelly. If she does get an open rack and starts being able to fire... Celebska is going to have to rise to the challenge again. Crowd's beginning to come in. Those three ladies there. I'm going to call them the Golden Girls. Look at them. Nice. Enjoying their pool. And this convention centre, you see all those lights in the background. They're all over the seven-foot bar box tables from Predator. Hosting the championships, Eric. The Caribbean League Championships. And so many people here walking around in their shirts all their team shirts I've seen some great names on some shirts the rack pack chalk is cheap yeah I can see this league event developing into one of the best league events in the world it already is I mean Vegas would be uh, at the top but I, I see Vegas potential with this league event here very nice venue beautiful city just put her on the top of your list if you're ever considering playing in a league event. Chance to watch the best players in the world as well. Good solid break again. But no. Two's got a chance. It's down. Oh, it's made it. Last ball rolling. Seven's blocking the one. Going to be pushing here. Maybe push. Over to that top right hand corner somewhere, leave an edge of the one. I've noticed this, you know, watching more 10 ball. I never, for some reason, I never thought about it as much when I'm actually playing it. But it's a much tougher to push in 10 ball because there's so many more blockers in the middle of the table and there's so many more balls on the table. Like 9 ball, the pushes seem a little more obvious usually, you know. You 
in 10 ball, it's like you've got to avoid so many different walls and areas. I always so, find how amazing it is that add one extra ball, it makes the break so much more difficult because it alters the shape. It goes to a triangle rather than a diamond shape. Yeah. Uh, but that one ball extra always seems to make a huge difference. Yeah, well, the biggest thing is that it's tough to make two. So, you know, most of the racks you're going to end up with nine and call it maybe around half the racks you're going to end up with ten. Nine ball, most of the time you're ending up with eight and a lot of the time you're ending up with seven. So it's just the number of balls on the table. And you're right, too, about the shape of the rack. With the triangle, the balls tend to end up in the middle more, which offers a lot more safe opportunity. And with the diamond, for whatever reason, the balls need, uh, tend to end up on the rail more, which... Or it's harder to play safe around those balls. See, like that shot there. Not saying it was a bad shot from Kelly, but she was always going to leave that kind of five, seven, ten wall, right? And it's like, okay, well, if you avoid that one, then there's other ones on the table too. Like pushing is actually very underrated, tough in ten ball. Yeah, never thought of it like that. See, this isn't just entertainment, guys. This is education as well from Eric Horlifson. Those of you who don't know him, great player out of Canada. And he does lessons as well. I know he, you've been doing a lot of coaching, Eric, haven't you? Yeah, I offer online lessons as well. You're welcome to contact me on Facebook Messenger or you can go to my website, myfirstandlastname.com. Thanks for the plug, Mark. Anyone that does good things for Paul is all right by me. Oh, this is close to the pocket. Yeah, Zalewska's going to have the first look here. The cue ball's tracking over towards the 597 area. Yeah, I'm sat right behind this, Eric, and it's, it's on. Didn't have quite as much of it as originally thought. She can definitely get to it with a half swerve. She has to consider that. Just didn't have quite enough of it to really go at it directly. Chao Chai Yu has taken the first set in the battle of the Taiwanese. She's taking it against Wen Ling Wang 4-2. So she leads by one set. Wei Chu Chen, defending champion, one up. And Cheska Santino is also one set up and 2-2. The second with Jasmine Ocean. OK, I think S Santino was up 2-0 in that set. So Jasmine mounting a bit of a comeback. Try from Kelly there. Gonna leave an open shot here. He balls traveling naturally towards the three. Cheska's match against Jasmine is available on YouTube as well on the table one, on Billiard TV, and all the others on Kazoom.com. Oh, Miss Q. Wow, I heard that, yeah. See that quick action there, though? How quick her backstroke was and, and the acceleration? She's got to stay away from that. Oh, I want you to have a look at something she does. I was watching it when she was warming up. She was playing the long straight in shots, and she missed it every single time to the, to the left as I looked, to her right. And as she was stepping into the shot, she would then move her whole, all, both legs and body over to the right. Mm. Sorry, to the, her left. That's like a sight right type thing. That's, that's that thing that Stephen Feeney is pitching. I I don't mind it. I, it's it's more lining up off the middle of your body and then and then stepping kind of across the line. But the idea is that you're feeling the angle of the pot from the middle of your body. Yeah, I actually had a lesson in it, and just because I was curious, 
and it kind of get it gets your dominant eye and even the part of your dominant eye and if you watch Mark Williams he's a, a big advocate of it definitely and watch the way they stand holding their cue yes and with their legs closer together than normal parallel yeah, yeah. and then they've sighted the shot through the right and then they just step either side of the shot kind of thing yeah so if you're right-handed it'd be stepping to the left and if you're left-handed it'd be stepping to the right it could be, you know it could be just oh, her not again no she's okay, this okay. Time. could be just her natural approach as well but it sounds like a sight right type feel going to it yeah you just made me think of that you know being a coach yourself I just wondered what kind of faults that you see most often in players? Well, something that you're mentioning there, if she's missing the ball the same way, she has to figure out why, right? It could be in her sighting. It could be in how she's cueing the ball. So it's something to take note of for sure. Kelly looking to extend her lead in the second set here. Nicely on the eight, going to be traveling naturally towards the nine in the side. Yeah, and we are all familiar with her battling qualities, and she's drawing on all of those right now. And if she can win this second set convincingly, you can make her favorite coming in. In the deciding set. It is a deciding set. We don't go to a shootout straight away in stage two. If the third set goes to 3-3, three, three, we will have the shootout. Strong play from Fisher there. Asserting herself in the second set here. I've often had the conversations with many different players about this particular format. And Kelly has a philosophy where she says, I just treat it as a, a race to eight. If I get to eight first, then I can't be beaten. Yeah, it's very, it, it, it can look certain ways on paper, but it's very unlikely that if you win the race race to eight that you'll lose the set. I, I don't even know if it's possible to lose if you actually It's not, no. No, yeah. I mean, you can win 4-1 and, and, you know, there are many different permutations of yeah. it. But if you win eight... You're going to get over the finish line. You're going to get over the finish line. If percentage. you get to eight first, I mean. Right. Gets the players thinking a little differently, though. That's the, that's the thing. Have you played this format at all? I never played one. Yeah, I don't remember you playing in any of them. Uh, is it something you'd like to try? Sure, or? definitely, yeah. Maybe we need to get one going in Canada. I know we had the, the Women's Canadian Open in Red Deer. I'd love to go back there for a men's event. Yeah, Toronto's a big area. It, it would play well in Toronto. It would, the field would fill, I, I'll guarantee you that. Yeah, made that wing ball in the side. Shows you're breaking pretty okay if you're making that ball, Eric. Yeah, that's the one she's going for. Pretty straight on the one. Might be forced to draw straight back and play the two in the corner. She'd like to play it in the side. Taking a look over at the angle for the side here. Cue ball might be tracking to the left a little bit. If that's the case, she can play it across. Looks like she's going for the draw. It's okay as well. Nice shot there. Got perfect. 
Getting some rhythm now, isn't she? Yeah, this is where she gets dangerous. Open play. Confident player. Similar to Centeno. Another thing with the way, the speed that she plays at when she is confident, Eric, all of a sudden she can win a set very, very quickly. Oh, and yeah. you're sat in your chair thinking, what happened there? Definitely. It's, it's her trademark for sure. But Olivia still in the driving seat. She's still got that one set lead. She'll be thinking positively as well in her chair. Just a little bit short. Yeah, it's becoming two rails across here. Not much angle needed on the seven. She'll be playing the eight in the corner. Jasmine has just taken the lead in the second set, 3-2 against Cesca Centino. Interesting. That could be going to a deciding set. So could this one. Semi-finals today at 2 p.m. Final at 5. Who do you like in the teams, Mark? I, you were asking me earlier, who, who are you favoring? Well, it, you know, it pains me to say it, but Team GB started off so well last night, but then kind of faltered, but it was understandable because they'd already done enough to qualify kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. They've got to play Chinese Taipei tonight, and they're looking very, very strong. I mean, if we can get by that one, you know, it's going to be tough, but if we can... You know, we've we still got a chance, got to the final last year against the Philippines. Philippines went out last night, but you've got to fancy, you know, Germany, who look very, very strong in all departments. Austria look great as well, but then again, so do Team America. Yeah, cream so of the crop. A lot, I think a, lot of, a lot of good teams left. Anyone can win it, mm -hmm. is my honest answer. It's just who shows up on the night and plays the best pool. Right. Simple as that. Kelly had a bit of a tester on the 10 there, but made it. Big lead now in the second set. Up 3 nothing. How's Phil playing for the UK? Had a great first set last night against Viktor Zelensky. Beat him 4-0. Wow. Kelly went on and won 4-0 against Olivia. And she's playing now. Mm -hmm. Scotch doubles, 3-1 up. GB work two chances went begging on the five ball to close it out in two different racks Phil then didn't play so well in his second set against Wojtek Shevchik so they're favouring Phil in the singles they're, they're yeah playing. because Darren just doesn't feel confident but he's still there offering his great knowledge of the, of the game of course sure so th that's the new thing this year that they've introduced where the players can come and give advice at any time I mean we had all three Polish players in the <laughs> in the uh, arena at once giving advice to Wojtek so it's, it's good I think it's great that the advice part yeah. well it's a team event right so yeah. why not let the whole team get involved mm -hmm. Kelly looking to make one of those two balls behind the one either the six or the four I think it is so watch out for those going into the side pocket yeah made the one in the location of the four last rack there it goes again there it goes the four good break shot on the one so Kelly's starting to mount some offense from the break here. Finding her stride now. I think the coffee started to work, oh, Eric. Yeah. Cue ball's tracking a little too far to the left here. There is a small window between the 5-9. She's looking at being able to hold. Looks like she is straight enough. Let me on the hold on the right side of the table here. I just can't quite get comfortable. 
How yeah. many times has she made that bridge hand over her career? Yeah, in between bridge here, but she's set solidly now. Probably be playing like a stun run through here, minimizing the angle on the three. Good camera shot as well. Just checking how much angle, the, how much pocket the six has past the seven. If she doesn't like it past the seven, it's available on the side. That's the ten second beep. Beeps again at five. Four, three, two, one. Yeah, it's, don't want to hear those beeps when you're shooting. And again, it's kind of odd for Kelly to be getting down to the end of her shot clock. She's a, she's a faster player, but just come up with a couple situations that she feels like she has to take a little more time on. I'm guessing the first time she heard that, she was thinking, what's that? <laughs> I've never heard that before. Right. <laughs> a ringing in her ears. Nicely on this six. Yeah, making her way, making her way nicely through this rack, and this is for two break and runs in a row. So strong play from Filler, or pardon me, Filler Fisher here. <laughs> <laughs> Been doing too many matches. Well, she is a killer. <laughs> from Fisher here in the second set. Oh, we have a killer filler Pino over on table one, up against Jasmine Ocean, who took the first set. Against Cheska, but Jasmine has taken the second to level it up. Nice, good competitive match going on over there. Olivia hasn't done too much wrong in this set. Last time she had a chance was when Kelly left her not quite enough of the one, wasn't able to make it. Kelly's played well. Olivia be going for a regroup after this set. So Kelly to tie it up one set apiece. As a reminder, we won't be going to a shootout in the redraw format. They'll be playing the third set. If it ties three all, we'll have a shootout. But good signs here for Kelly, making a strong comeback. And we're going to make a strong comeback after a very short break. Olivia taking a little bit of a time out. Kelly will also. So we might as well as well, Eric. Eric Hollison and myself, Mark White, will be back with set number three after a very short break. See you soon.
Welcome back to the third set here. Match between Lydia Zalewska and Kelly Fisher. Olivia took the first set. Kelly came back strong in the second set. It's a quarterfinal match in the women's division for the Puerto Rico Open. Presented by Predator Group and Medallia of Light. Oh, look at that for a solid square hit. Yeah, Kelly was on two consecutive breaking runs in the previous set. Not going to start off the same way here. Kelly kind of got into that quick fire mode in the last set. Confident play. Didn't leave a shot here on the first shot of the rack. Olivia's going to have to push. It's like pushing into the middle of the, long sh the longer short rail. Just leave distance. Make the judgment on the safe a little tougher for Kelly. Yeah, right around this area is good. the rail slightly only because you know if you leave it on the rail your opponent might just give it back to you yeah it's already a tough enough push yeah I mean, kind of leaving that option of poss you know possibly playing the bottom part of the cue ball or making the queuing not as tough it would be too tough if you left it right on the rail hasn't got that yeah not quite enough speed for Kelly here. Look for Olivia to play the cue ball behind the seven. It's Santa Claus. Didn't mind moving the cue ball less there and just trying to play behind the seven. She's left the carom for Kelly, and I'll tell you what, it's a bit of a two-way. It's going to be guaranteed distance between the one and the cue ball. She's called it. Yeah, and what a, what a way to start the second set would be if you can get a really quick rack in, especially when you've had a dry break. Tried the rail first option. It actually hit it pretty well, but just not the exact contact point she needed. Yeah, Olivia will be thankful to still be in this rack. Could have gone in that. She's left her funny here, though, on top of the 10. Look at this shot. Yeah, I'd be thinking at least the 10 still there, though, Eric. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she'll be happy to be have another chance. You see the grip on the cue and that quick stroke once again, Eric. So that shot was actually so tough that she played safe. Hard to believe that she played safe when the object ball was right over the pocket like that. But she couldn't really do anything with it. She would have had to elevate and power draw it, which is too tough because of where the cue ball was. So she played safe there. Okay. Nice shot from Kelly. Not good enough, though. So Kelly with another chance. Just coming out past the nine here. Rest of the racks lying pretty good. Again, this is where you see Kelly get comfortable, kind of just got a little too much angle here. She can draw into the five, hopefully not pushing the five into the seven. Put just a little bit of pace in this to make sure she gets the five past the seven if it is going to go anywhere near it. Went that direction, but she'll be okay there. Got 
kind of half over top here. Still comfortable enough bridging. Nice shot. Oh, nice. She's certainly in the zone now. Yeah, would have rather to be a little straighter here, but she can play the cue ball around two rails for the six in the side. Good shot, staying in control. Jasmine Ocean has taken the first rack in the deciding set on the table next to us. Yeah, big turnaround there. Did the second set end, end up 4-3 or 4-2 for Jasmine? 4-2. So she's won five games in a row over there. Must have really must be playing well. And Kelly looking for her. Fifth rack in a row as well. Yeah. Oof. Just a little bit of movement on that shot. She won't be panicking just yet, Olivia, but it could be slipping away from her this quarter final. Yeah, she knows what she's up against. Kelly's running racks now, so she knows she's going to have to fire back at her. She made the most of Kelly's mistakes early on when she had to, but there's not so many coming now from Kelly Fisher. Yeah. So it's five racks in a row also for Kelly. She takes the opening rack. Deciding set. Now, let's have a little trivia question for you. Why Kay. is the kitchen called the kitchen? Oh, you got me. I'm, I'm excited for the answer. Though. It's a lovely, lovely little story, this. When people started getting tables in their homes, Okay. The rooms weren't necessarily big enough to take a pool table. So they would put them in the living area. They would double up as maybe a, an eating table, that kind of thing as well, right? They put a cover over the top of it. Yeah. But the, the kitchen end, as we know it, was always next to the kitchen. And there were double doors where the kitchen is so that when they had to break, they would break off from the kitchen end. Wow. They would open the doors and there would be enough room to break. Where there do you, you find go. these tidbits? Oh, Mark? I've got, I'm such a pool nerd. I've got no life outside of pool. So when I leave here, I just, you know, like you go out to a nice restaurant to dinner. I go back to my room, get my Google out and just try and find some bizarre facts around Well, it's pool. funny because sometimes when I'm, when I'm teaching, I'll, I'll mention the kitchen. And I'll, I'll just say to students, I have no clue why it's called that, but just remember it for slang terminology. But that, I'll, I'll have a little bit to add now. Appreciate it. There you go. <laughs> Break it off from the same position. She'll be looking to make the eight in the side. Didn't catch them very well. The opposite ball behind the one yeah. on the side, though. Wasn't as strong that break, I didn't think, Eric. Yeah, it hit it a little off square, so the overall energy into the rack wasn't quite as much. Perfect result, though. She's straight on the one. Two's right there. Really getting the break and run game going in these in the latter part of this match. This will be for three of the last four. Racks will be breaking runs from Kelly. I think that was you I was commentating with yesterday when we were doing the Josh Villa Federal course. What a match that was, by the way. Yeah. High level play from both. We were talking about people that have broken run sets. And I think it's only been done three times, I think, in the history of the Pro Billiard Series. I know Mika Riemann did it once. Yeah. You came up with one as well, I Pelle believe. Pelivanovic. Pelivanovic, exactly. He broke and ran a set. Yeah. But they're pretty rare. Yeah, it's very tough under, under any conditions to run four racks in a row. Hand rack conditions is going to be a little tougher. Kelly's staying in line good here.
shot of her back grip there. Yeah, she's always had that slightly quick stroke, but it works for her. Yeah, she makes it work for her. It's, it's not a stroke that you necessarily teach, but a obvious personification of if if it's the type of stroke that works for you, it can be effective as well. Same as Shane Van Boney. I mean, he does so many things that the textbook says don't do. Yeah. But look at him. <laughs> Multi-world champion, multi-US Open champion. Yeah, the main thing you're looking for in your stroke is something that you can repeat consistently. And that's, that's the holy grail for all pool players. Some players never find it. Good yeah. shot there from Kelly. Well, we said she wasn't playing jam up earlier, but she certainly is now. Dead punch is another term, I believe. Yep. So there's 10 ball to double the lead in the deciding set. She'll be two away from a place in the last four. And tough to fade for a player like Olivia, too. Hasn't been shooting, really, for about half an hour now. Lovely to see the ladies in the audience really appreciating and enjoying the match. I wonder if they play themselves. It's a big thing in snooker, Mark. I always see that in the snooker audi audiences. Older women, like, watching snooker. I guess it's on their home TVs a lot, and they come out to the matches as well. Yeah, it's very popular with all ages but as you said it's, it's because it's you know there's a lot of drama in it it's it's very colorful and the guys are nice you know it's it's relaxing too. it's relaxing it's he's kind of got the tv on in the background having your cup of tea and your scone you know mm -hmm. with a bit of cream and jam on Kelly Fisher after losing that first set. What's well, a nice colourful jersey look. He looks very pensive, doesn't he? Deep in thought. I wonder who he's supporting. Jasmine Ocean, 2 1, sorry, 2 0 up in the deciding set. Way 2 10 is 2 2 with Rubelin Amit, another great Filipino player, double world 10 ball champion as well. But Wei Chu Chen took the first set against Armit and 2 2 in the second. And one of your favourites, Wan Ling Wang, lost the first set and 2 1 down against previous world 10 ball champion and 9 ball, reigning world 9 ball champion, Chao Chai Yu. Yeah, held both world titles within, the, within a calendar year. Strong player, looking to make her way near the end of this tournament as well. Kelly looking to get on the hill. Watch out for either one of those balls. I think it's the five ball. Didn't get either this time. Lots of balls near pockets, but nothing down. So first chance for Olivia and a bunch of racks. Is not, it's just a pushing chance, but at least she's at the table. Scratching her head, I'm scratching mine. What about you, Eric? Yeah, I mean, they, she, Kelly's never going to be able to pocket the one, so she's not in big trouble where she has to worry about Kelly kind of running out or, you know, playing an easy safe. There's just so many thoughts on these pushes. First one I saw was down by the bottom left corner, right you know, where she's standing there. You know, we got to watch there. Look at the one nine, the nine off the eight into the corner. Could be if it ends up being right wired. Yeah, the, the, the eight plays big there, pushing the nine towards the corner. Ricky Bryant. He's off home to look after mum when he lives when he leaves here. Oh, she's pushed where you said. Now let's see what Kelly makes of this. 
I mean, you're right, Mark. The, the nine's playing the nine right towards on. the left side of the eight. Yeah, it's it's got to be playing right into... It looks, if anything, it's a little bit kind of more into the short rail, but she's actually looking at it now, I think. It'd be an aggressive try. She's got to watch it because she's playing in a short race situation. I think, she, yeah. I think if she hits it full in the face, she makes the, the nine off the eight. I know I'm crazy, but Not sometimes they go. Sometimes they the go nine. right. Yeah, sorry to interrupt <laughs> you there. She's uh, she's called the nine. She's going for it. Well, I'm going to retire after this match if I've called that one right. I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. Oh, called the shot, just not the result. They had to have you shoot it, Mark. Yeah. Uh, that that be. <laughs> he actually ended up caught, catching it a bit too thick, I think, didn't she? Yeah. Well, left. Kind of a half a chance. Certainly a good safety available. She's gone for it. Now then, where's the cue ball though? She's okay. So, manufacturing a chance for herself here. See what she can do with this rack. Flying pretty good. Gonna take if the three passes the eight, she won't have to move the cue ball as much. A little tight beside the seven, might choose to play the side. Good shot. A little too much angle going to the right, but lots of open area going to the right. Wei Chu Chen on the hill, a double hill to win. Two sets. She now leads three-two in the dis in the second set. Could be the deciding set for her. She can win the next rack. Yeah, she she quietly makes her way to being very successful. Jasmine now on the hill, so she's guaranteed a shootout against Cheska Centino in the deciding set. Wow, big That's comeback, winning what what is it now? Seven games in a row over there. It's what champions do. They step it up when they have to. It's what Kelly did on this table. But Olivia not finished yet. Doesn't look like the five passes the seven on the side, so she'll have to play the bottom left corner here. Playing into the angle position. Okay. Combo will be the next order of business, but the nine's nice and close to the corner pocket. Six is lined up pretty well with it. Tell you what, after sitting for this long, she's come out with a good rack here. Showing that if, Keller do, if Kelly does give her any chances, she'll be ready to take them. Nicely played. Well controlled the six as well. to move both at the same time. I noticed that. It could have been to do with that she was reaching for it, but overall, yeah, you want to have more stability with the bridge there. Nice view of the Predator bridgehead. Lots of different angles you can come at it, flip it over on both sides. About six different heights available. I call it the moose head. What do you yeah, call it? It does look, does look like that, yeah. you got a few of them in Canada, haven't you, Eric? Yeah, the Canada moose head, yeah. It's actually one of the national beers is called Moosehead. Mo 
Molson, I remember as well. Yeah. But this all about Medea Light this week. Our big, big sponsor. So Olivia showing that she's not going to go anywhere. Takes the rack and now trails 2 1 in the deciding set. Remember, semi finals today on your screens. Both free to watch on YouTube. We'll be at 2 p.m. local time here in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And then the final at 5. And then we're back at 8.30 tonight with the quarterfinals of the teams. And then the final day of Action Eric will be tomorrow, Sunday, when we will have the semi-finals and the final of the teams. Who's going to be in it? Well anyone's to win yeah first row of that will start at 8 30 tonight all the quarterfinal matches going off the team event Centino is at the table with the 7, 9 and 10 left to win a rack back okay, in their so deciding set. Finally putting a stop to the onslaught from Jasmine. Yeah, and she takes the remaining, ball, remaining balls. 3-1 now to Jasmine deciding set. Yeah, hit that rack better. Hit it with a little more power. Got good dispersion, but nothing down. Didn't leave an open shot for Kelly here. Safes are going to be pretty easy. Could consider playing the cue ball behind the eight. Sure, her husband is watching her very proudly at home. Olivia's partner. Kelly's considering using the two sixes blockers and playing the cue ball down near the seven. That's a good shot as well. Called the ten. It's low percentage. But what a bonus this would be if she makes it. Not enough speed. Yeah. Good shot. Definitely playing the safe more than the ten there. Good recognition to call the ten just in case. She's got her full ball here. Can go into sh the short rail with left spin or choose to go two rails around the right side of the table back to the left. Rublin has tied things up in the second set 3 3 now with Wei Chu Chen. That's a big game coming up there then. Olive Olivia Zalewska. I made sure I got that pronunciation right and a quick word with her before. Great shot. Yeah, gonna not a bad a result. Distance result, and the six gonna get, is going to get in the way as well. Six is too far from the one to jump at it. Kelly has the left side rail available to hit the one. She'll be kicking at it with draw, trying to stick the cue ball. Could be some options off the short rail as well. This is a little dangerous because you're kicking the one towards the 10 and if you don't kick the 10 and you could leave some kind of combo. Yeah, she called the 10. Yeah. I'd say it's more likely to actually leave a combo for your opponent. So I was thinking about the side rail, but we'll see what happens here. The two could play into the 10 as well. Hasn't left an easy chance here, and it's tough to get the cue ball on top of the two where she'd want to be to combo at the ten. Yeah, it's all about the one ball now, isn't it? Yeah. If she does choose to pocket it here, the, the position plays better into just 
pocketing the two in the side or the top left corner, not really playing the combo. I think she has to play offense here. The defense is tempting because it's high percentage. But with a player like Kelly, I, I would have leaned towards going after that. Got the save. Might have left the slightest right edge on the one. If she did, Kelly will be playing the cue ball back behind the five. Looks like she did, and it actually is a kind of a two-way. The cue ball can get back in a similar area to where it is now, and she might have a shot on the two. Good try. Cue ball's going to be good. It's always going to get some kind of cover. That's why I was talking about trying to actually pocket the one. I mean, she got a little unlucky to leave the right edge, but that's the kind of things that happen when you play safe sometimes. And never mind if she didn't leave the right edge, Kelly's good enough to play a bunch of combinations of kick safes back at her. Let's see where this one ends up. This is going to be a big... Through the window. Olivia, yeah, having a chance to win this set. I don't think she has enough of it to pocket it. Looks like she doesn't, but Kelly's going to be, be playing the cue ball right behind the five here. Be looking to get the cue ball as close as possible to the five. Just having a good look more to see if she has enough of the one to stop it behind the five. If she doesn't, she'll cross it over to the right side rail. Oh, she Ooh. might have found a window herself here. I'll have to get a front ink, front ca camera angle on this one. I don't think it's on. I don't think she can get to the potting angle, can she? I think she can hit the right-hand side of it. Yeah, she's going to be stuck behind the eight on the next shot. Not quite behind the eight, but good coverage with the nine. Kelly will want to will consider jumping at this. It's on the wrong side of the table for her to actually get at it. She'll be sitting on the table, and she knows that, so she's going to favor the kick here. Maybe call the side pocket. Yep. She's going two rails. Oh, oh, she she did it wrong. Yeah, should leave some kind of shot, and it's an in-between. Keeping in mind now that the 210 could be available. I think she'll play position for the 210 here. A bit of right spin across two rails. Good hit from Zaluska. It's on. It's on, and she's going to be right behind this, Eric. Just where you want to be on this. Yeah, inch perfect on the combo here. Cheska has pulled another rack back. It's now 3-2 in the deciding set. Down from table one. Yeah, lots of competitive matches here going on in the women's quarterfinals. Good shot. We have a match on our hands as well here. 2-2 two, two in the third and deciding set. Yeah, and this next rack, so important to get to the hill first. You're going to be guaranteed at least a shootout. Yeah, taking note that the first player to three here, if it ties at three all, would be going to a shootout. But this next rack will guarantee either player playing in the shootout. So really almost considering it like Hill Hill, both players. a young champion of the future maybe I used to have hair like that <laughs> you're a pretty tall guy you Eric how tall are you pushing almost 6'6 six, six. wow have you ever played basketball did you ever consider basketball I was a decent level volleyball player did you used to do Bas the spiking were you the spiker yeah I was an outside hitter yeah was an average basketball player. I could shoot well, but I couldn't move good enough. 
Not agile enough. Yeah, Olivia breaking off from a similar position. She'll be looking to make a ball in the side as well. Just doesn't, it's the backswing's too quick, isn't it? And too small. Yeah, too it short. Has to time it a little better. Hasn't been offensive off the break at all. She's hung in the match though. Kelly's broken around three of her, three of her racks, mainly in the second set. Two of them in the second set. Um, but she's she's hung in with all the moving plays and took advantage of the chances she has had. Yeah, just 28 years old, Olivia. So plenty of years left in her. Yeah. Maybe I'll suggest you for some online coaching. More than welcome. Any any players are more than welcome to contact me. Probably be looking at playing the five in the long pocket here, just avoiding the eight eight nine traffic coming across table. Depending on how she gets on it. She could play it to the same pocket as the three as well. Actually a little straight to be coming back over for the long pocket. Yeah, I think she just caught that three ball a little bit too thick. Yeah took a bit of the pace of the cue ball out. She can play on top of it, which will actually lead into a better shot on the five. Oh, wow, look out, eight ball, and that's exactly what you were talking about earlier on, that seven, eight traffic. Yeah, she just got a little straight, and the angle ended up leading into that track a little better, but still the straightness wasn't able to power through it enough. Still fancy to make this though. She knows it's a big shot in the match here. Extension. Looks like she's considering the bank, kind of looking over at the left pocket. Yeah, it could be an element of safety in this as well, like play behind the nine kind of thing. That's Guaranteed a shot on the six. That's what she's thinking for sure. Haven't seen her call anything. I think she's going aggressive down this right hand rail. Good shot. There he goes. Watch out for the cue ball. She's okay. No foul. Way. She called a foul on herself. Oh, what a sportsmanlike play there. Uh, that's the kind of person she is, as honest as a day is long on the follow through. She caught the eight with her cue and straight away owned up to it. That's from her snooker background. Snooker players are known for always calling fouls on themselves, things that refs always can't see. Yeah. But definitely not obligated to. It's a testament to her character. Cheska Centino has just pulled another one back. Better on the side and than in the corner, surprisingly. It's so direct in the side that I feel like she'll go there. Still Nicely done. Well, Jessica Centeno and Jasmine Ocean are now in a shootout. 3-3 three, three in the deciding set over in table one. Good comeback from Centeno. Lots of back and forth in that match. And I'll tell you what, Olivia is going to guarantee herself a shootout if she makes these last two balls. Surprising result over here, but Olivia's deserved it. A couple untimely mistakes from Kelly here and there. 
Oh. She's feeling the heat for sure. Be happy to see that one go down. Uh, this is a great comeback from Olivia. In it goes. And it was that owning up to the foul on the eight, which went unnoticed. She called it on herself, as you said, Eric. Sportswomanship of the highest order there. As we look at Kelly, and she'll have no regrets about calling it either. She wouldn't sleep if she hadn't have done. Yeah. Jasmine makes her first 10 ball in the shootout. Kelly Fisher on the brink of elimination here. Yeah, Alison Fisher went out yesterday. No relation to Wan Ling Wang. And she's making a comeback in the second set. She's now on the hill. She leads 3 2, having lost the first one against Chao Chao Yu. Nice. Rublin Amit is hill hill in the second set with Wei Chu Chen, the defending champion. You can see the difference of the pace in the matches on the outer tables compared to the stream tables. Outer tables are on their second set, stream tables are on their third set. Referee. Taking extra care to make sure there's no gaps. One one in the shootout now. Both players made their first ball. Jasmine and Cheska. Last year's semi final, remember, Cheska went on to the final to play Wei Tzu Chen. And it was Wei Wei who ran away the final and ran away with a trophy as well in the first prize yeah as i was mentioning earlier she's she's right at the top not, not particularly one of the players that's maybe mentioned in the top three to five but great player really important break and continuing in the same vein though didn't leave a shot Look for Kelly to play, be playing the one down to the middle of the short rail in line with the 10. Not a lot to hide behind on her end of the table, but a good 5, 10, 4, 8 wall there. Playing the one in line with that. Shot. Yeah, Jasmine makes her next shootout shot as well. We could be witnessing in our own here. Kelly will be hoping she does. Olivia's really shied away from the jumps in this match. This one's a little more up in the middle. It might be tough for her to reach but it's a weapon she needs to develop, for sure. Yeah, she did have a couple of jumps early on, didn't she? Cue ball left the table on one of them, and the other one she didn't get over the intervening ball, so maybe just confidence a little bit low, Eric, on yeah. the jumping. Front. Yeah. Good kick. Oh, where's the cue ball? It's okay, and she's got cover herself. Big sigh from Kelly as she comes to the table. Can't believe she didn't get a better shot after that hook. She'll be pretty much guaranteed a hit here, playing off the short rail. Very low percentage to pocket the one. Oh, she can actually see the edge of it. She's going to create She's distance. Swerving it, isn't she? Uh, 
and Jasmine. to confirm can't quite tell by the reactions both players just kind of taking the result as it is yeah I believe it was Jasmine I think Cheska missed her shot just going to confirm that for you guys as soon as I can Olivia with the first chance in the last rack here Rack's lying well. Three's playing into the four nicely. Five's pretty available in the middle of the table. Yeah, I can confirm for you, Jasmine Ocean has beaten Cheska Centino, getting revenge for last year's semi-final. So she will be in the semi-final later on today at 2 p.m. Big comeback there overall. And she'll play either Wei Chu Chen or Rublin Amit. Olivia staying in good line here, and this will be for a big upset, biggest winner of her career. See if she can finish off these last balls. Got straight, which is not ideal. I feel like if she stops the cue ball, she'll be, run, be able to run the cue ball into the eight and still maintain good position on the six. Punch nice. forward. Stun follow. Nice shot. Yeah, that was a good shot. The cue ball is still drawing a little too far to the right, though. She'll be okay. She just won't be able to get the angle on the six that will play naturally towards the seven. Might be straight enough to just draw it close to the six. Just graze off the... Oh, she could. She's looking good, but she's got a lot of work to do. She's close to this ball, Eric, and needs to play it with pace. Yeah, the nice thing, that, the thing that'll give her solace here is that she should never miss the six, but the cue ball control has to be very well thought of. Watch for a double hit here as well. Mm -hmm. Getting too much follow through. Good shot. Watch out for the cue ball. Jeez, I like that track. It's not going to go in. Caught a small roll there. I like that positional track. Smart shot. I think she'll be a little straight on the seven. She is straight on the seven, and the seven's a little far from the pocket to be playing rail first. I think she'll just have to cheat the short rail a little bit, create as much angle as she can going towards the eight. Exciting stuff here on table two at the convention center in San Juan. It's a good shot. Is she drawn into the pocket? No, she's okay. okay. This is a tough eight, though. Well, Kelly will still be hanging on to some kind of hope here. Not ideal on this eight, Eric. Yeah, the nine's very available, though. Really can just try and pocket it. Deep breath. Yeah, it's good for her. His breathing is big here. People gathering, sensing something big might be about to happen. She's missed it. Wow. Tough. Could we be going to a shootout? This is real Kelly Fisher territory, this eight ball. Oh, what a chance there for Olivia. Worst comes to the worst, you'll get a chance in the shootout. Yeah, it's not over yet. She's still going to have second life in the shootout. Do you know what? Funnily enough, I watched this girl warming up for about 45 minutes before, and I don't think I saw her practice in the shootout shot. Okay. Maybe she doesn't have to. Oh, she's Kelly. missed this by a long way. She stabbed at that. Watch out for the 10. Not going to get oh, it. Oh, dear. And Olivia all there for Olivia now. What happened there? Pressure. Nobody's immune to it. Uh, drop of the head there from Kelly. Yeah, she fears the worst. 
Olivia will fear the best here, or welcome the best, because this is a great chance to take a big scalp. And, you know, kudos to her as well. She's hung in there. She did have that defeat against Kelly last night in the team's 4-0, but she's come back. Well, Kelly played such a strong second set and had Olivia Oh, far here. this has gone just a little bit far, putting a little bit extra pressure on it. Okay. She had Olivia sat for a long time, but she's come back strong here. Oh, she'll be hoping. She doesn't even want to look. She's kind of having a look through open fingers kind of thing. She's missed the 10. Oh, why did she play it so hard? Oh, a little bit of pressure again. It's 100% oh, the pressure. Oh, dear, oh dear, oh dear. Been in this spot before. Oh. Overplayed the nine and just, yeah. You feel for it, don't you, a little bit? Kelly Fisher doesn't. We are going to a shootout, guys. Well, are they going to stay in the arena? She manages a smile. I don't know if that's a false one or not, but... Here we go. Oh. Kelly wants to go and sh get those shoulders working. We will be back with our shootout guys very, very soon. Players taking a well-deserved break. We don't deserve one, but we're going to take one anyway. We'll be back soon.
Welcome back to the San Juan Convention Center here in Puerto Rico. And there's drama everywhere. We've just seen a shootout on table one. Jasmine Ocean beating Cheska Centino. Rublin Amit, another Filipino, has just won the second set against Wei Chu Chen to make that one set all. Chao Che Yu has beaten Wan Ling Wang to go through to the semi finals. She's waiting the winner of this, and we don't know who it's going to be. We're in a shootout, guys. It's the 10 ball place where it's racked in the rack. Kelly won the leg, so we'll get to choose whether she wants to go first or second. She's already chosen that. She, of course, she wants to go first. She can also choose the side where she starts. So, as a right hander, going over to the right-hand side as we look. Eric? Yeah, most right-handers prefer cutting the ball to the left, viewing the right side of the object ball. So right she's going over to that side. Actually, I, I would say most right-handers prefer the opposite side. Good shot. Yeah, she went really close to that side pocket in a shootout yesterday. Almost scratched against Christina Zlatova in her last 16 match last night. So now Olivia will have her chance. Really focusing, look. She'll play from this side also. Then they'll go over to the other side. There'll be four innings, and whoever has the highest score at the end of those four innings will win the match if we're still level. The box shrinks back from the kitchen line. Back one diamond. But we're not there yet. Oh, and misses her first ten. And you just start to wonder. Has that chance she had in that last rack? Definitely. Two chances Affected overall. Up. Over hit the nine ball, didn't she? Yeah. And then left to that missable 10. One that you normally make, you know, if it's 1 0 or 0 0, you just get down and knock it in, right? But when it's to beat Kelly Fisher to get into the semi final. No doubt the pressure got her. And it's understandable. It's the furthest she's been, it's the, le it's the strength of the opponent. It's not as easy as it looks. Yeah, and it's only ever one first time, right? Yep. And then on it should get easier. Shot. Yeah, Kelly actually won the German Open in a shootout against Elul Kibaroglu from Turkey, winning it 8 7. I remember that was a long one. She must have thought it was all over in her mind. She can't believe she's here. I mean, this is a huge bonus for her, isn't it? Now you see the 10 ball racked with the white face up, so there's nothing for the players to aim at. It's just a, a blue sphere, a bit like the planet Saturn. Yeah, that was a nicer stroke, wasn't it? Yeah, good shot. Hanging in there. All it takes is one miss from Kelly for her to come back to level terms. Wei Chu Chen has taken the first rack in their deciding set out on table four. Available on kazoom.com. Chao Che Yu and Jasmine Ocean are already through. Again, I just mentioned Chow Cho Yu there. She is reigning nine ball women's champion. She's looking to add this Pro Billiard series to her ever growing list of achievements, known by the name Rita as well. 
also known as Big Eyes, and she's got her big eyes on a big prize. Twenty-two and a half thousand to the winner of this tournament. Nicely done. Yeah, Zalewska hanging in here. Kelly still has the advantage, though. Yeah, this is for the win. If she pockets this ball, yeah. Zalewska can't catch up. We're basically in sudden death already. Yeah, matching her hands here. So make this, make the semi final. If she doesn't. We're going on. Lunch might have to wait, Eric. I know her coach Lionel will be watching. The telephone was ringing in the background, but it didn't disturb her. A nice embrace from the two players. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with our semi-finals at 2 p.m. Kelly Fisher will be up against Chow Che Yu, and we still don't know the result of that one. Tune in at 2 p.m. to find out. Thank you, Eric Hollifson, so much for joining me. We'll see you soon. I've been Mark White. Ta-ta.